I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we use NetBackup to protect your VMware environments. First thing you need to do is add a VMware server. It's pretty straightforward. Just need to know the host name, credentials, and pick a backup host for validation. Once you have to authenticate with the box, it's going to go through and discover all the VMs in the environment so that you can configure protection for them. But first, now this is going to work very well if I don't have storage set up. So how about we do some cloud storage? All I need to do here is configure the cloud provider I want to use. Select them. Next, I can pick my region I want to go to and storage class. And finally, I just got to pick which media server I want to host this. I'm going to pick VM21. It's always a good idea to give it a name. It kind of tells you a little bit more about where it's going and what it's doing. So I'm going to just call it Amazon and I'm going to say Cloud Catalyst. And that helps me know where I'm setting my stuff. Finally, this is the hard part of enabling Cloud Catalyst by checking a checkbox and telling it the volume of mount location you want to use. If you were doing this with an appliance, the experience would be just the same. Um, next, all I need to do is put in my credentials, no peaking, and uh, there's advanced settings I want to set, all sorts of stuff from encryption and whatnot. So if I want to do encryption, I got KMS encryption. I simply just have to provide the key group from the encryption server and then I can select additional media servers that can write data to this pool. After that, all I have to do is just confirm the storage server properties and click Finish. Now what it's doing right now is it's gonna set up the storage server and get it all prepped uh, to run the deduplication services that we need to write to the object storage. Uh, once these objects are deployed on that server, um, it's simple a simple matter of going in and setting up essentially which bucket we want to use. We're going to call that a disk pool, so I can pick whatever name I want to put in there, uh, simply a logical name, and then I can pick uh, the storage server, indicate that again, and I need to make sure I go through and use the bucket. I can use an existing bucket, maybe I already created, but if I haven't created a bucket, I can just go in here and pick the bucket and designate which region I want to use. Now keep in mind the bucket names have to be lowercase and can't use certain characters. If I do that and I hit next, um, I can also do replication target, but I'm not going to now. Uh, configure this, it will actually finalize the deployment of the storage service. And then all that's left to do is add a storage unit that I can use as a logical target for my jobs. With that taken care of, let's create a protection plan and assign protection to a virtual machine. Creating a protection plan is pretty straightforward. All I need to do is go in and say to add one. Uh, pick a name that's descriptive of what I want. And in this case, I'm going to not only set up a protection plan to do a local backup, but also to send a copy to the cloud from the same server. Uh, scheduling is pretty straightforward. I can pick a, in this case, a Think those all look good except for i want to make sure i make sure i make that copy to long-term retention right away once i decide what i want to do i have to remember to go into the start window and set that up i'm just going to make it wide open and frequency based I click save and next and i pick my storage first copy is going to go to local msdp on vmo7 and the second ltr copy is going to have vmo7 send it to the cloud same machine again after that uh, there's a few options I can do. Click next, click next if I don't want to assign granular permissions and finish. And I've created the protection plan. All the next thing I need to do then is go find a VM that I want to protect. And I can assign protection by simply selecting that machine. Clicking add protection. Pick the protection plan I want to protect it with and selecting next. Review my things, click protect, and it's done and all taken care of. That machine will get protected and will follow that policy. But say you don't wanna to have to micromanage VMs and make sure they get backed up and all that sort of stuff. So for that, we have intelligent VM groups. 
With intelligent VM groups, it allows you to define criteria that you're used to automatically select VMs to make sure they get the protection that you want them to get. Uh, simply do that by using a query based on a various criteria that you want to check, check and you can cascade them and put them together. In this case, I'm just going to use tags. I'm going to tell everyone who wants their VM to get backed up to make sure they tag their VM with a tag that says, back me up. That tag then will get picked up off the VM automatically by NetBackup whenever uh, the policy runs. So for protection, I can again just go in and pick one of my protection plans I've defined and uh, simply have to assign that protection plan. And I, like I showed you earlier, you can have different criteria and different things that happen in those protection plans. And it will automatically apply that protection or that series of locations you want that backup to go to, to any VMs that are discovered that have the defined tags. Let's say I just want to run a quick backup without having to do any special effort to do it. And what I'm going to do with this one is I just search for this VM in the infrastructure that was automatically discovered. And I'm going to do the new backup now feature, which means I can take a protection plan and, uh, and back it up right away. All I have to do to do that is pick the protection plan I want, say VMware Backup 2, and click Start Backup. Go in here and I can see the job run. It's relatively straightforward. The job will run. It does a snapshot based backup of the VM. And um, what it's also doing is using an accelerator track log, uh, which means that if you were to rerun that job right after that, um, it would help optimize reads for synthetic fulls and high performance backups. If I want to do a recovery point from one of the backups of this VM, I can do a couple, a couple different options. I can restore. This particular VM's got a backup, as you can see, one is local, one that's been sent to the cloud. When I do a restore, I can do an instant access virtual machine, I can restore the Volvo virtual machine, or I can even just download individual files and folders from the machine right onto my computer that I'm running the browser from. Uh, this works essentially by using uh, direct access to the DDoop storage to do file level recovery right out of the VM image. All I need to do is patiently wait click on add and it will allow me to browse uh, basically the file system of this client. This is just a Windows box. Let's pick a few random files just for the sake of it. And we can recover a whole directory or individual files. I just got to select them just like you would expect. Click add. They show up to the list of things that are going to be recovered. Um, I run this and it prepares the files. I have to simply just click download. It will download a zip file with everything that I indicated in it. Um, those files uh, will be in a standard zip file, which allows me to uh, pretty much recover that to any platform whatsoever. So it's a nice and easy way to get quick access to files. And consider this if you got like a VM admin uh, who wants to do a self-service, you can use RBAC to give them this access to the backup infrastructure um, and control that. So the next cool trick we could do, this is again from a build your own environment I've set up. I'm gonna recover this VM, but instead of recovering it onto the data store that the vCenter server is using, I'm gonna run it right off of our backup storage using instant access. Uh, I'm gonna give it a unique name just to avoid confusing anybody and I have to go through and click next. And then next thing I just have to do is start the recovery. What this does then is it again uses um, the backend storage to present to the vCenter environment a new data store that it can use to run the VM off of. So then you go into vCenter and you can see it's created a new VM. It's powering it on automatically as I indicated it should. Um, this uh, is a fully functional VM. It would look just like the one I backed up. Uh, and it allows me to do things um, uh, such as recover it. Um, I can recover across infrastructures. I can use it for dev test. I can use it because I just wanna try something out, for example, um, or whatever reason I have. And um, I can also do extended things too, like I can vMotion it. Uh, if I wanted to do a vMotion recovery, it will come online and vMotion in the background while I'm still using it off the back end. Um, and this machine just boots up and it's good to go. And when you're done with it, you just need to click delete and it will disappear. Not only will it pull it out of the vCenter environment, but it will clean up the backend storage. Um, of course, your backup's still gonna be there. So you'll still be able to go back and do it all over again. Um, as you can see here, it's 
no longer present. It's all cleaned up. Um, and then this is actively cleaning it out and we're all good.